You're listening to Bible Prophecy Daily, a weekday podcast where Bible prophecy matters and matters greatly. Shalom in the Lord. My name is Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. I'm discussing end times definitions. These are common terms within the Bible connected to the study of eschatology or the end times. So far, I've discussed the day of the Lord, the last days, the times of the Gentiles, imminency and expectancy. The two terms I'll be talking about today are the tribulation, which you probably are very familiar with, and Daniel's 70th week. Now, both of these are connected to the study of end times or eschatology, and the first one is, again, the tribulation. You've probably heard that phrase many times over the years, depending upon the church or denomination in which you were raised. This is the belief that there are seven years of God's wrath at the end of history. This is based on Daniel 9, 24 through 27, which I'll get to in our next definition in just a few moments. But those who believe this and teach it base it also on the seals of Revelation 6. But there's a problem. The Bible never calls the final seven years the tribulation. There is the great tribulation, which I'll cover at a later time. But to say, quote, the tribulation is God's wrath for seven years is an incorrect definition which has led and continues to lead people into gross and unfortunate confusion. When you misdefine a word or a term, that wrong definition gets handed down to the next generation, who believe it to be defined correctly, and then in turn they pass it down to the next generations. It can be devastating to the study of end times, and also devastating to the Bible, theology, and people's lives when they believe a term is defined correctly, but in reality... It's defined incorrectly. And I've said this before, and while there are wonderful Bible teachers and pastors who believe the, quote, tribulation is seven years and seven years of God's wrath in the world, as lovingly as I can say, and if someone is watching or listening, search your scriptures. That is not how the Bible defines it in Daniel 9 or anywhere else. The seals around the scroll in Revelation 6 are open one by one, and they are never all called God's wrath. His wrath is not mentioned until the sixth seal. What does that mean? That means the previous five seals cannot be God's worldwide wrath upon humanity. However, the Bible calls Daniel 9, 24 through 27, and this is our next term, Daniel's 70th week. I want to start this by actually reading the text. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the Prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. And he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of that week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Now, if this is the first time you've heard these verses, it can be very confusing. All the numbers and sevens and events and more can cause your brain to swirl around like spaghetti. (laughs) So let's briefly break this down. Seventy sevens of weeks or years are decreed. These weeks are a measurement of timing totaling 490 years. This is connected to the Jubilee cycle in Leviticus 26, 18 through 21, 2 Chronicles 36, 21, and Jeremiah 25, 11, and Jeremiah 29, 10. You say, what does all that mean? The Jewish people 
had neglected to give the land its Sabbath rest for 70 years. And in those verses, God promises seven times the amount of judgment for however long the land was not given at Sabbath. So that's where the 490 years came from. So 70 times 7 equals 490. Next, I'm going to address to whom this is referred. The angel told Daniel this time period was decreed or determined for his people. Who is that? Israel. And his holy city. What is that? Where is that? Jerusalem. These seven years are not focused on the church, but to the Jews. However, the church will be impacted during that time. Then the angel states, and Daniel writes down six things that are going to be accomplished. Number one, finish the transgression. Number two, make an end of sin. Three, make atonement for iniquity. Number four, bring in everlasting righteousness. Five, seal up the vision and prophecy. And six, anoint the most holy, and some translations have place in there, which is probably very accurate. Now, I'll address these six here in just a few moments, but I want to talk about the time stamps first. The time stamps, what is that? Well, first, these seven weeks, 49 years. Second, 62 weeks, 434 years. These two divisions are mentioned in the text. Go ahead and check it out. They equal 69 weeks, 62 plus 7, or 483 years, that's 434 plus 49. And Daniel gives details about when these weeks or years will be fulfilled. The clock began when the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem was given. Now you may think, wait a second. First of all, why, why is this happening? Why did this happen? Remember, in 586 BC, the Babylonians destroyed Solomon's temple and leveled Jerusalem. The city was the focus and needed to be rebuilt which is why God gave this prophecy to Daniel through the angel. So when was this decree given? Well, it happened after Daniel, obviously. And there are a few different views about when the years began, but probably the decree of Artaxerxes in 455 or 454 BC, uh, referred to in Nehemiah 2 and Ezra 7, is when it actually took place. And from that decree, or after 483 years, Jesus comes onto the scene. Now, some say that fulfillment refers to the crucifixion, but I believe it refers to the baptism of Jesus. Why is that? That was the public statement that Messiah has come. He was anointed for service by the Holy Spirit and began his ministry. So I believe those 483 years were completed at that time. If you want to say it's a crucifixion, that's fine too. But that still leaves seven years to be fulfilled. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a rabbit trail here. Those who say that God is done with Israel, or who hold to an amillennial or partial preterist viewpoint, say these last seven years are figurative and were completed in 70 AD with the destruction of the temple, and that Daniel 9, 24 through 27 is mainly talking about Jesus, who returned to judge Israel and put an end to the sacrificial system. Now, God did judge Israel in 70 AD. He did stop the sacrificial system at that time. Christ did atone for our sins even better. He forgave our sins completely on the cross when we put our faith in Him. He did bring in righteousness for those who trust in Him. However, there are some serious problems with those who believe 70 AD was the complete fulfillment because many of the details don't fit. We don't have everlasting righteousness now. The most holy place was not anointed but destroyed. And if you even view Jesus as the most holy person, he wasn't anointed, he was crucified. And in case you haven't noticed, sin is still around in our world. And specifically within the Jewish community, as the prophecy states and is the focus. Because the majority of the Jewish people have rejected the Messiah and they are still in their sins. And we should be praying for them and witnessing. The text also says judgment will be poured out on the one who made the seven year covenant. And you say, wait a minute, that's the crucifixion. If so, then Jesus was judged for his sin and not ours. That makes a big problem. And that creates a big problem. Because the text says that complete destruction is determined for the one who makes desolate. So it doesn't make sense. Also, how does 70 AD fit with the crucifixion? Think about that. Because the crucifixion occurred 37 to 40 years prior to the temple's destruction. 
The sacrifices and offerings did not stop until 70 AD. How could that be the midpoint of the seven years? It doesn't make sense. In addition, because the first 483 years are literal, the last seven years must also be literal. You cannot spiritualize them and be faithful to the text. It just doesn't work. If the 483 years are literal, the last seven have to be literal too. So if 70 AD was the final point of Daniel's 70th week, then it started in 63 AD? Again, it makes no sense. Also, if someone views these 490 years as consecutive, and Jesus was baptized around 26 or 27 AD if you hold to a 30 AD crucifixion, or 29, 30 AD if you hold to a 33 AD crucifixion, that places the completion of Daniel's 490 years at about 33 or 34 AD, or 36 to 37 AD. Okay? That's, again, it still doesn't make sense. All this is to say, those who believe the 70th week of Daniel was completed in 70 AD cannot do so without allegorizing a literal time frame, which leads to all kinds of problems. There is one week or seven years yet to be fulfilled, and this final seven years of this evil age will precede Christ's return to earth. Now, those who state the 70 weeks is the tribulation period again have some problems which I've already mentioned. Again, this is a misdefinition and has caused and continues to cause great confusion. Nowhere does the Bible say there's a seven-year tribulation, but it does call it Daniel's 70th week. Just a few more details on this. Daniel's 70th week is broken up into two parts in the text. There's the first half and the second half, each consisting of 3.5 years or three and a half years. Now, what occurs within each half is an entirely different study. But I hope this summary has been helpful to you. Also, and last, God's wrath and revelation is focused on the world, Israel, and more. Not only does God judge the world, but those judgments are also for His people, Israel, to purge them and bring them back to Himself. And now I want to finish with one application. There are times in our lives when we go through difficulties. Now, sometimes it's because of our own decisions and desires and selfishness. And we can't blame anybody for that, be honest. Other times, it may be a situation completely out of our hands. God uses both of those things to purge us of ourselves, of our selfishness, and of our pride and to bring our focus back on Him where it should be. I'm Dr. Michael Weiss with Zion's Hope. Be sure to visit our website, zionshope.org. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Parlor, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There are hundreds of videos on end times and more from our very gifted Bible teachers on there. We also have books, articles, and many other resources available on our website as well. And until next time, be strong in the Lord until he returns. Thanks for listening to Bible Prophecy Daily. We hope you learned something valuable today. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast so you never miss an episode.